Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, look what I got here. It's a five inch chuck. No back plate. Uh, I'm going to put it on my South Bend 11. Uh, South Bend 11 is an inch and five eighths threaded spindle. Um, common size is inch and a half. Uh, I don't know why they went with the uh, oddball size, but I can't get a back plate for it. Uh, so we're going to make one today. So I'll show you what I got. I have got a 6x6 six six piece of 1 inch thick steel here. And I kind of dread starting this because it's going to be a time consuming project. Of course I'll edit the video so it'll be a pretty quick video. But what I got to do is drill a hole in it uh, and then thread it for inch and 5 eighths and then turn it down so it's got a, a like a protrusion. Uh, and then I'll flip it over and then use, use, uh, screw it on the lathe and uh, use my lathe to cut the contour for the chuck and fit the chuck to it. Uh, anyway, first thing I got to do is drill a uh, 1.47 hole, I think. Uh, but I got a long ways to go, so let's get started. Well, I'm going to have to be careful that my cross slide doesn't hit the corners of this thing. I probably should have trimmed the corners off it, but I think I'm going to just go with it like it is. Well, my drill selection goes up to one inch, so I'm going to bore to one inch and then use a boring bar to enlarge it. So far I'm really impressed with the way this south end is doing. It's got quite a, quite a bit more power than my other lathe. Even though they're both half horse, this one's uh, got a wider drive belt, a little less slippage. I have to go eight thousandths further on my dial. It's actually sixteen. I could go eight thousandths more. New dial. Four seventy-two. That's close enough. Two thousandths over. Ready to cut some threads now. Nine and a half. Taking about three thousand to pass now. Good to do.
Bang, bang, zerbi. Okay, it started, but it's definitely not deep enough yet. But it did start, so it's got to be getting close. In those halves, I'll try it again. Hard to know where to quit. I don't want to go too far. I can go a little bit too far, but definitely don't want sloppy threads. Goes on a little further, not much though. I'm going to take three more passes and try it again. Got out on the internet and I calculated the hole diameter based on 90% threads. They said most threads are 70%. There's probably a reason for that. Uh, I'm probably cutting pretty deep threads. Probably could have gone by the recommendation at 70%. But I thought these are need to be precision. In other words, normally you can cut judge thread dips by when, the, when you have the sharp peak on there, but I'm past that. Perfect. And now I've hit that shoulder. Heck yeah! A lot of work. But now I gotta cut that shoulder, and I wish I had done that to begin with because that shoulder is gonna mess up the start of the threads. Maybe I can get in there with a pick and a wire brush or something and clean them up. Yeah, there's an unthreaded portion there on the spindle. I don't know how long that is. I need to measure that. About a quarter inch, just slightly over. I'm ready to make a lot of a lot of chips here. What we need to do is take it down from here on out. Give me about a two inch hub there. Redu basically what we're doing is reducing the thickness. That'd be too big a cut once we get into the solid metal there. Maybe a few hours. Well, it's looking pretty good. It's taking a, like a bazillion passes on it. But I'm going to take two or three more. I'm right at five eighths of an inch right now. Just slightly under. And, I, and then I'll take off about maybe an eighth inch on the other side uh, so it fits inside the chuck. So the eighth inch would just be on the outer perimeter of it. I'm going to take like two more passes on this.
Well, I knew this would be messy, but dang. That's a lot of out of debris. I'm getting ready to take it out of the truck, take the chuck off, and mount that on the spindle. I think that spindle is yeah, going to stick through just a little bit. I don't know if that's a problem or not. It may. It could be an issue. Maybe not. Thing is, I'm going to cut a little recess. I call it a register right there on this plate. I'll just have to be careful not to go too far because I don't want that to hit this. Oh, that's going to be close. Can't cut much of a register. I didn't think about that. I started out with one inch thick plate. Okay, this is how not to make a faceplate. <laughs> uh, really, I should have had a bandsaw and cut that in, at least in a rough circle before I trued it up. Uh, there's also a way to make a terra panning tool. I think that's what they call it, which has got a curved bottom to it. Kind of like a cut from a piece of pipe. Um, but I did manage to get through this. What about that? What a pain in the neck though. Broke a couple of inserts. It's not a good way to do that. Yeah, quite a ways to go yet. Okay, let's cut the register on this. So what I'm going to do is lock my carriage and use my compound to feed that tool in. I'm going to establish a ledge, measure it, and then do the math on the diameter and use my dials to get to the right diameter. Okay, if I did my math right, I got to go 153 thousandths more. I'll go uh, 100 and remeasure. My spindle is hitting this plate right here because it's just a little bit too long. I'm going to take this off and turn that down right there on my other lathe. Just turn a section there where the spindle won't hit it. Well, looks well made in there. That's aluminum, which kind of surprised me. I guess it's kind of a dust cover. Should be easy to turn down. I think that's it. Now I gotta drill those three holes. There we go. Good deal. I was a little worried about that. After turning the corners off of that square, it, it was tightened pretty hard on there. Okay, I've got my indexing wheel set up here. And my tool post drill. And as near as I can tell, I'm at the needed two and a quarter inch bolt circle. So what I'm going to do, something kind of crazy, but I'm going to scribe a line and then measure that circle. Okay. 
Let's see if my scribe is two and a quarter inches wide. Well, it looks like it to me. Maybe just a thousandths out. Now, I need to find, find out which marks I put on this wheel that are three apart. Disengage my spindle first. Okay, I've got the first hole lined up. Pretty good. Real good. Wow. Can't believe it. Fit perfect. That never happens. <laughs> okay, I want to do something here. I want to make sure that it draws up completely. I want to make sure there's resistance on that paper when I on all three screws. Yep, I'm gonna to have to machine that ledge just a little bit more. That one's tight, and that one's tight. This one's loose. Still loose. Yeah. No big deal. I'm still set up. Okay, I got a perfect fit now. No need for the paper. Let's give it a try. I got almost four thousandths run out right there. I don't like that. Now look at that. <laughs> One thousandths at the chuck. Well, I'm tickled about that. I don't understand how it can be off here and on here. But right here is what's important. So, Well, I'm tickled with one thousandths at the chuck. Uh, at the chuck jaws. It's kind of surprising. Anyway, that's how not to put a back plate on a chuck. Uh, well, we did some things right, but definitely don't turn that OD down like I did. Uh, I had the lathe running too fast, and uh, I should have either used a terrapan, I think they call it, or uh, cut it down on a bandsaw to rough it before, before I turned it down. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe.